So we had already seen uh, various uh, continuous random variable and derived distribution of continuous random variable. Then I come up with two a special kind of uh, distribution. One was gamma distribution. When you will go to talk about machine learning, then you will see in Bayesian framework lot of application of gamma distribution and beta distribution. Gamma distribution and beta distribution. And in Bayesian framework, and Bayesian is more advanced technique to deal with uh, multimodality, that real world problem, real distribution or grid distribution. If you talk about grid distribution, so gamma distribution will come into picture uh, in uh, Bayesian framework. And second one also beta will also come a lot. Actually, beta will come a lot. Gamma will also come and beta will come beta distribution. These are very much important distribution when you go to talk about Bayesian uh, machine learning approach. So these are very important or you can say that these are a starting point if you are going to study that kind of things. So beta distribution. So you have to revise it while uh, if you are taking uh, any electric course in machine learning and in Bayesian framework you should revise all these. Uh, beta distribution. You know that uh, what notation we have taken for all this, so you can recall all those. I am not going to. And now, today we will discuss about in detail uh, normal distribution. That means there is a random variable, continuous random variable, which is distributed normally. That means having uh, normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance sigma square. So, the corresponding density function will be defined in term of mu and sigma square that we had already seen, the density function, what is that? So if you talk about this uh, normal random variable, then what we do, we can asynchronize it by defining a linear function. How we define a linear function? So we know that uh, uh, x uh, is a normal distribution with mu and variance sigma square. So we can come up with a distribution, uh, new random variable, we call it z. And how it is defined? It is defined from x. So what we do? We deviate x by the mean of x. What is that? Mu. And we we normalize it or asynchronize it by a standard deviation. That means a square root of the variance of normal random variable. Then if you talk about uh, this z, what is the mean of z? Anyone may compute what is the mean of z? Just compute mean of the z you will easily see that mean of z is 0. What is mean of z? It would be mean of x minus mu divided by sigma. So what is sigma? Sigma is variance of, it measures the variability of x. It is one kind of parameter. So at this point we consider it is non-random in nature. There is no randomness. It is deterministic. Sigma is deterministic. Mu is deterministic. deterministic. There is no randomness in mu and sigma. So what will happen when you are applying expectation uh, over a deterministic? Simply it will come out of the expectation operation. So if you are applying this like here, so sigma is just uh, non-random in nature. So here it will come as, we will write it everything here expectation of z is equal to expectation of x minus mu divided by sigma and sigma is non random in nature so it will come out of the expectation it is behaving like a number that which is non random like 2 3 4 5 so it will just come out of the expectation we will have uh, 1 by sigma and expectation of x minus mu and we do further here. What is expectation of x? So here we will write it expectation of x. And what is expectation of mu? What is expectation of mu? It is mu itself. Why? It is deterministic in nature. So it would be there is no randomness. The expectation of mu would be mu itself. And what is expectation of x? What is expectation of x? It is mu. So in denominator, what we will have? Mu minus mu. So that means what is mu minus mu? Zero. So it is. 0. So as, what is expectation of z? It is 0. Okay. Now next I am asking to compute variance of z. What is the variance of z? 
Would you like to compute variance of z in your notebook? Compute variance of z as per formula. Compute variance of z. Everyone try to compute in your notebook variance of z. So what formula, computational formula, I am not talking about definition formula. Uh, the computational formula says that variance of z, how you will compute it? Expectation of? You will write here. Expectation of? Directly, you can put it here uh, uh, in term of expectation of z square minus a, a square of expectation of z. That one is 0. So just you have to compute expectation of z square. So compute, uh, it is just equal to expectation of z square. Second term would be 0 minus, I am writing it here, 0. A square of 0 is 0. So compute the expectation of z square. What will come here? Anyone? Have you computed expectation of z square? That means 1 by sigma square will come out. You will just have expectation of x minus mu whole square. What is the name of that? What is the name of that? What is uh, expectation of a square of mean divided random variable x? What is that? That is the variance of x. What is the variance of x? Sigma square. So you will write it here as sigma square in the numerator. Also in denominator, you have already taken out sigma square. So sigma square, sigma square will come out and you will have what value? 1. So variance of z is what? 1. It is coming as 1. Intensely, I skip that. I haven't written that step. Okay. So you can, in notebook, you can derive. I have already discussed how it is coming. So what you say? Z is a very special kind of uh, uh, normal random variable whose mean is 0 and variance is 1. You don't need to know compute mean and variance. You know that uh, when you say a standard normal random variable, that means mean is 0 and variance is 1. Very easy to uh, proceed with a standard normal random variable. So you can write in notation here Z, that means uh, uh, it is having notation n 0, comma, 1. Mean is 0 and variance is 1. How you are getting it uh, from uh, normal uh, normal random variable? By a standardization. This process we call it a standardization. This process we call it a standardization. That means deviate the standard normal, uh, deviate the normal random variable and uh, divide it by a standard deviation. That process we call it a standardization. It is a linear operation, a standardization. This operation we call it we do convert and give a normal random variable into a standard normal random variable. So, uh, a standardization. Okay, a standard. We are making a standardization. La last uh, would be n here. So you can complete that. There is a space so you can complete it. Asterization you can complete it. See. Okay. So this is the process to come up with applicable form of a normal random variable and we will talk further here. Okay. So normal distribution we had already discussed. What is the normal distribution? Uh, why we are going for normal distribution? Uh, motivation is that when p is small and n is large, the best approximation of binomial distribution is Poisson distribution. If p is small, very small, and n is large, then we go for Poisson distribution. But what will happen when n is large and when n is large and there is no information about p? P may be small, may be large. We don't know. There is no information about. So if uh, there is no information about p, we can't talk about approximation of binomial distribution by uh, Poisson distribution. We have to go for normal distribution is the be better approximation. When n is large, that means we go from uh, discrete to continuous. That uh, uh, limit of sum is integration. Limiting form of sum is integration in, in high school, we might have already seen similar here. n is very large, then we go for uh, that approximation of binomial by a normal distribution when n is la very large and there is no information about p. So you can see here continuum pattern. Here n, you are taking it 40. Number of Bernoulli trial is 40. Number of Bernoulli coin toss is 40. 
and if you take number of coin toss of Bernoulli trial is uh, 90, then what kind of uh, distribution pattern you observe? You observe this kind of pattern, okay? And if you are increasing it, you see continuum pattern. You see, if you keep on increasing number of trials, Bernoulli trials, you will see continuum pattern of continuum distribution of the points, continuum distribution, and hence you will get a normal distribution situation if keep on increase. So here you are taking 30 and here you, you are taking 270. You are getting uh, more distribution of the points. It look continuum of the points. Okay. And so that's where you are getting uh, uh, normal distribution. When n is very large, you are not worrying about p. Okay. And the uh, density function we had already seen that. This is the density function of uh, normal uh, random variable. Okay, I don't have to explain it much. Okay, and this is the plot of uh, if you are taking mean equal to one and variance is one or something like that, then this kind of plot you will observe. This is the uh, PDF of normal distribution with mean one and variance one something like that. And uh, this one is the corresponding CDF. CDF is it is one kind of sigmoid function. Why we call it sigmoid function? It is having S shape. S how we are writing it? S we if we are, we are having a limited space, then S we will write it like this way. But suppose we are having, uh, I am asking to write S in a very big way. You are having a lot of space, then how you will write it? You would like to write it like this way. So uh, this shape we call it sigmoid shape. It is coming from, uh, it is having sigmoidal representation that way. So this kind of, so generally if you talk about continuous random variable, and then the corresponding CDF would be, CDF would be of this sigmoid shape or S shape, S shape what we call it. It is, uh, okay. So, a standardization of what I had discussed. So, once you are having a normal random variable with mean mu n variance sigma square, then we can asterisk the normal random variable by using this operator, uh, this transformation. X minus mu divided by sigma. In that uh, process, we will we have already seen expectation of z, it will be equal to 0 and variance of z, it will be equal to 1. And reversely, if you know the standard normal random variable z, then we can uh, invert it and we will get x equal to what? Sigma time uh, z plus mu. That means if you are having a standard normal random variable, then this operation we call it translation. Uh, this opera operation we call it a scaling. A scale the a standard normal random variable by an amount sigma and deviate it by an amount, uh, deviate it uh, or translate, translate it amount uh, uh, mu. Then you will get back a normal random variable with mean mu and variance sigma square. If you are having a standard, so it is two-way journey. That means uh, this one is you are coming from x to z, and this one is you are uh, going from z to x. So reverse. It was in this one is inverse operation of uh, this operation. You can say that if you know about. So uh, the inverse operation would be in the normal table. If you are having normal table, you will apply inverse operation. And if you are having a normal random variable, you have to asterisk it for application purpose. So the probability density function of a standard normal random variable, it is very simple, symmetric about origin. Why? Because mean is 0 and variance is 1. So uh, this is the uh, probability density function of a standard normal random variable. And this is the uh, CDF of a standard normal random variable, CDF. And people may call it error function, something like error function you can call. Uh, if someone is asking that, uh, what is the integral of this one? It is simply not having explicit form of uh, this integral. There is no explicit form. You have to go for Euler approach for different different value of z. You have to go for Euler approach, then you will come up with some kind of approximation of this one. So this is the CDF. It is not having, it is written in term of uh, what we call it uh, uh, integral and we call it error function. Generally, it is coming in... Uh, uh, error computation or something like that. And the plot of uh, PDF is, it is, you can see that it is symmetric about, sim symmetric about origin. 50% uh, left of origin and 50% right of origin. Why? Because origin is the mean of a standard normal random variable. So it is symmetrically distributed. Symmetrically distributed. And uh, this side, what what is name of this side? Uh, this distribution it is going like this way. What we will call it? Anyone? Anyone ha having any physical re resemblance? 
what we will call these these two side this side this right mode side uh, right mode side and left mode side uh, side what we will call it don't know if you are seeing an animal which person is touching the ground see a monkey with long tail what you observe tail is the touching uh, tail is touching the ground now so tail we can say that this one is tail tail is touching if you take a long rope and hold at middle and try to raise it what will happen both side will touch the ground now it is possible to raise all the rope uh, uh, at the same time from every person it is not possible so tail will touch there would be both sided tail but if there is an animal like monkey one sided tail would be there okay but if you take a rope you will get both sided tail so here you are simply it is one kind of rope you have raised at the mean so what you observe the tail has uh, there are two tails both are touching the grounds those things touching ground we call it tail and it is having two tails one is this one is right right hand tail right tail so rt call it and this one is left tail what are the probability of right tail and left tail anyone no 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 directly this right tail it will the tail this person is not touching the ground this will be not part of tail are you getting meaning of this or not this one is not if you take an elephant what you observe body of the elephant touching the ground main portion of the body of the not only tail will touch the ground tail is going if tail is very long then that will touch that section will touch the ground so this one is tail so and uh, if you talk about how much uh, uh, body percentage contain in the tail of an elephant very small main weight uh, uh, main body contain in the middle part na no? middle part not uh, in the tail part of the elephant so tail is containing very a small probability this probability this side probability it is uh, almost zero very near to zero it it, it would contain 5% of the probability or uh, 2.5% depends upon what scenario you are taking or uh, this one is uh, likewise also this one is containing uh, very small percentage this right tail and left tail containing very small percentage of the height or probability distribution are you getting meaning of this or not all these are having physical uh, resemblance so we will talk about application of normal random variable the first application is coming that so if you are tossing a coin n times you are performing a uh, uh, bernoulli trial n times and you are willing to compute probability of k successes then definitely you have to look for uh, binomial random variable but in binomial random variable you need to know the probability distribution probability mass function of the binomial random variable that is not given to you then how you will compute it then it is not like computation you will estimate it okay if you know probability of success is very small then we go for poisson if, if probability of success is not given we don't know uh, it is not a small then we will not go for poisson we will go for normal distribution ha huh? so consider a binomial distribution x which is having uh, 100 trial n equal to 100 uh, binomial trial and probability of success is 0.5 okay and we want to compute a probability that x is greater than equal to 55 how will compute this probability without using binomial distribution so we will come up with a close fit of the binomial binomial distribution with a uh, similar kind of normal distribution close why close fit we will take the mean of the binomial distribution and the variance of the binomial distribution and mean and variance we will take then we know that with the mean and variance we can come up with a binomial uh, normal distribution so why is a normal distribution with the mean of the binomial distribution what would be mean of the binomial distribution this 100 time 0.5 would be what 100 time 0.5 would be what 50 so from here easily you can compute what is mean mean 100 time 0.5 0.5 means 1 by 2 so it would be 100 time 0.5 it is coming as 
okay likewise if i am asking to compute variance what is the variance anyone may recall the formula of variance np 1 minus p so it would be 100 time 0.5 into 0.5 What is the value? 25. Okay. Same thing. What? We, so variance is 25. For this uh, binomial random variable, mean is uh, 50 and variance is 25. So corresponding normal fit we will come up with a uh, normal random variable with mean 50 and variance 25. Now, with the help of this y, we will estimate probability of x greater than equal to 50 pi how we do estimation so if you talk about the probability that x is greater than equal to 55 and if you talk about distribution of x then it is coming as so 50 is somewhere here take 50 mean mean is the 50 and where would be 55 where would be 55 left of me 50 or right of 50 so it is right of 50 so 55 is some somewhere here call it x is what discrete random variable and y is what continuous random variable okay x is discrete random variable and y is a continuous random variable y is a normal random variable na so y is taking value in continuous fashion and you have been asked to compute probability that x is greater than equal to 55 then in term of y what would be it x is greater than equal to 55 in term of y what would be that that corresponding event we are having in term of x we are having event x is greater than equal to 55 that x is greater than equal to 55 this okay but it is x is taking value in discrete fashion in the equivalent event notation in term of y what would be the corresponding event If you write simply, you if you say y is greater than equal to 55, what does it mean? In the continuous fashion, you know that probability of a single point is zero. Okay, so you have to calibrate it in a small interval of 55. You have to calibrate. Are you getting meaning of calibration? Are you getting meaning of calibration or not? Say yes or no. Simply binary option is there. If not, then I will explain it. Are you getting meaning of calibration or not? Not. Have you attended any experimental uh, class in chemistry in order to measure some length of a small quantity? Or in physics, there would be a scale. You have to calibrate that scale in order to measure the length of a small quantity, very small or very large, very small. Generally, you will go for that. Okay. So calibration is coming there. So calibration is it will come here like this way. So here 55, you have to talk about a very small interval. So simply as a small interval, we are taking an interval of length one. That means we will take this point would be 55. Sorry, where I am here. This point would be uh, 54.5. This point would be 55.5. So we are taking. A, you can get a, as small as possible. There is no any issue. Okay. So this point. What is the name of this point? This name of this point is 54. Point five, and name of this point is this calibrated uh, terminal of the interval fifty five, because y is taking value in continuum fashion fifty five point five. So tell me what is the corresponding uh, event? Corresponding event of x greater than equal to fifty five. What would be that? Whether it would be y greater than equal to 55.5 or y greater than equal to 54.5, which would be equivalent event? Anyone? No idea. If you are taking y is greater than equal to 55.5, it will not include 55. So what we have to take? 
द करस्पॉन्डिंग इवेंट वुड बी वाई इज ग्रेटर दैन इक्वल टू फिफ्टी फोर पॉइंट फाइव दैट इज द कैलिब्रेशन दैट इज द कैलिब्रेशन आर यू गेटिंग कैलिब्रेशन हाउ यू आर गेटिंग इट वी वी हैव टू इंक्लूड फिफ्टी फाइव ना सो द बेटर कैलिब्रेशन वुड बी फिफ्टी फोर पॉइंट वाई इज ग्रेटर दैन इक्वल टू फिफ्टी फोर पॉइंट फाइव वाई इज ग्रेटर दैन इक्वल टू फिफ्टी फोर पॉइंट फाइव समन इज वेरी स्मार्ट वॉन्ट टू गो फॉर मच a smaller value you can come up with uh, l uh, interval of length uh, uh, 0.1 or 0.2 0.5 it depends upon what ap approach you are so as a small you will take your competition uh, will be much more tougher so here calibration we are taking that uh, the calibrated equivalent uh, event would be y is greater than equal to 54.5 okay so that's way if you are willing to compute uh, probability that x is greater than equal to 55 and x is a binomial random variable then equivalent uh, event in term of normal random variable would be what probability that y is greater than equal to 54.5 are you getting meaning of this calibration are you getting meaning of this or not okay fine so this probability is what it is a right tail probability tail you are getting meaning of right tail right tail probability away from mean Away from mean right word, right tail probability. So, what is the complement of this? Complement of this? Yeah, y is less than equal to 54.5. So that's why. What is the probability of this? It is we are getting one minus complement of this. So one minus y is less than 54. You can take it equality. There is no any issue because it is a continuum fashion. Pro probability of a single point is zero. So you can take in equality or you can avoid equality. There is no any issue over that. Okay. So uh, what is the probability? This probability is equal to this. Okay. Y is less than equal to 54.5. Now here we are seeing that y is a normal random variable. Then we will do perform here a standardization. How we will perform a standardization? Deviate y by the corresponding mean of y. What is that? What is that? What is the mean of y? 50, and divide it by the standard deviation of y. What is that? 5. So if you do apply this kind of operation here in left hand side of inequality, then also you have to apply in right hand side inequality as well, na? So in the right hand side, correspondingly we get the computation here 54. Point five minus fifty divided by five, and what is the computer? So this this we call it. This one is behaving like chair. This one is behaving a standard normal random variable. So it, a standard normal random variable is having fixed notation Z always. A normal random variable may have various notation, but a standard normal random variable is always having fixed notation. That's why we are calling it Z. The, this quantity we are calling it Z, and in left hand side we will have uh, 4.5 by 5. So what probability we are getting it? What we call it? What what is this quantity? It is probability up to what is the uh, uh, calculation of this it would be 0.9 plus will so here this this we call it uh, probability up to 0.9 probability of z up to 0.9 okay what is the name of that it is value of cdf cdf of z at 0.9 Value of CDF of Z at point nine. Z is a standard normal random variable, and CDF of Z generally we denote it by uh, a special notation that we call it phi. Phi is the notation of CDF of Z, a standard normal random variable. So phi of uh, CDF of Z at point nine is actually equal to phi of phi value of phi at point nine, and you can get this value from normal table. either it would be given in the question or you will get it from the normal if you see normal table value of uh, phi for uh, non negative z would be given there in the first column see 
0 then uh, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.5 like it will go like uh, see here uh, go in the first column uh, against the point 0.9 when when you will observe point 0.9 then uh, move rightward in the along the row. So after point 0.9 do you observe what, is, what uh, number is coming after point 0.9 0 is coming the, the next column would be against the 0. So in the first first in the after first columns in second column uh, the value would be value of point 0.90 would be there. So you have to put that uh, you have to find that value uh, that would put it here you will get the probability of uh, estimated probability of x is greater than or equal to 55. Here you have not applied distribution directly no computation what you do you apply normal table you play normal table game ok. So we will generalize it further generalize it further if someone is asking to compute pro probability that x is observing value k that be k number of success what is meaning of k and you are willing to estimate it by a corresponding normal distribution. So you will talk about k is here k is here, here. so again I say that calibrate this k point by a small interval. So this interval is what k minus 0.5 and k plus 0.5. So 0.5 I am writing it 1 by 2. And here k plus. Okay. Remember that this one is talking about probability that uh, k is greater than or equal to 55. That means you are computing right tail probability. But someone is asking to compute probability of x equal to k. It is not right tail. It is the value of probability at exactly k success. Okay. Then what you have to do? You have to take both calibrated point. Both calibrated point. What would be that? We will say that that uh, x equal to k is equivalent to say that y is observing value between these two point. K plus k minus 1 by 2 and k plus 1 by 2 ok this, this is the calibration because here equality is coming here inequality is not here equality is coming here so are you getting meaning of this or not ok so next what we have to do we have to standardize y how will standardize y what is the mean of y n time p mean of y this mean of x p is the probability of success what would be mean of x it would be n time p and variance would be n times p into 1 minus p ok. So that is where you deviate the y by uh, mean of y and divide by a standard deviation of y that means a square root of the variance ok. Then if you do this operation a standardization with y then you have to do correspondingly with all these uh, both the left limit and right limit as well. So do this computation so k would be given to you and the n would be given to you p would be given to you simply this uh, the middle term becomes z so correspondingly you will have what uh, phi of phi of it is saying that is uh, probability that you can say that it is you can write it like this way that uh, z is observing value between a and b it is a story like that z is observing value between a and b. So what how you will compute this probability? How you will compute this probability? What would be this probability? You are saying that uh, you will take probability that z is observing value up to b ok in that what is additional quantity? Anyone? In additional quantity that we do not want probability up to a. We want probability between a and b. And we are, when you are writing probability up to B, then it includes probability up to B, including before uh, B whatever numbers are coming. So we have to truncate probability up to A in order to compute probability between A and B. So that kind of things. So we have to compute probability. We have to subtract from here probability that Z is taking value up to A. Okay. So it is actually saying that what is this one? It is talking about probability that Z is observing value up to B. So this one is value of CDF of Z at B. 
and this one is value of CDF at A. So simply you will say that CDF of a standard normal random variable we denoted by phi. So it would be phi of B minus phi of A, phi of A. Same thing I have written it here. This quantity is B, this is the B, B quantity and this is the A quantity. So phi of B minus phi of A and you can write in very uh, simple form, simplify it all those things and you can write it. So very simple notation to compute probability, to estimate probability of K successes with the help of corresponding normal tweet, with the help of corresponding normal. So probability of error, it is again, it would be in different slide I think, in next slide it would be there. Okay, before that I should discuss this problem as well. Uh, this one is again coming uh, estimation uh, of K probability of K successes. Let us discuss this one. So I am except uh, 2480 student, each student has a 68 percent chance of attending. Okay, attending that means uh, for admission. Let X count number of a student who will attend, then X is having binomial distribution with uh, number of trial is counting number of a student uh, 2480 and what is the probability of success 68 percent that means 0.68 you have to compute what is the probability that x is greater than uh, 1745 uh, what is the probability that uh, that uh, there are more than 1700 students what is the what would be your first uh, approximation? What would be your first approximation if you are playing just option wise? You will say that this probability would be very small. Why? You know that uh, getting admission in IM is very tough. It is not like the very easy game. And 2480 students have applied. And you are saying that what is the probability that uh, 745 students have taken, ad uh, 1745 students. Uh, one so, okay uh, have taken admission there so definitely that uh, probability would be very small let us uh, that one is first uh, assumption as per uh, our prior information we compute it okay so n is uh, 2480 p is 0.68 then x is binomially distributed so, now uh, expectation is already we know that uh, we can easily compute n time p and variance is n time p into 1 minus p that one is 530 uh, 9.648 these are calculator game you can compute it all these okay and the corresponding standard deviation is 23.23 uh, 23 so we will take corresponding normal fit y with the mean of x and variance of x mean of x now with the help of y we will estimate probability that x is greater than uh, 1745 that means it is approximately uh, that probability that approximately equal to probability that y is observing value 74 uh, 70, 1745.5 actually it would be 4 here this calibration is little bit wrong calibration uh, okay you have to check it okay little bit so this point is 70 1745 Okay, you can convert here 74, uh, say 1744, you should convert here 1744, okay, and uh, everywhere you do the same thing. And then here same, uh, same uh, asterisk will come here and the probability would be uh, approximately this value, probability would be uh, approximately, value of uh, phi, phi at 2.54 you can get it from the normal table or it would be given in the question in the given if it is not given in the question then you have to raise where is the normal table actually normal table will take more space so i will give the value there in the question itself so that is the situation okay now okay actually arrangement of the question was no, not uh, properly so here uh, regarding the last problem that probability of computing error so you have already seen that variance we have taken it equal to 
variance is 1. Suppose variance is 1. If it is unknown, it would be difficult to compute. Oh. Variance is 1. So, cons so consider the noise distribution is uh, standard, having a standard normal random variable with mean 0 and variance 1. Okay. And we are willing to compute probability of error. That means t is greater than 0. So, what, uh, how you will compute? It is simply coming like this way. And uh, if you talk about uh, through estimation, if you go through normal distribution uh, PDF, then uh, the, the upper bound you will get e to the power minus t square by 2. This one is one estimate uh, without normal table. This one is without normal table. So it will have various applications. So one application is coming like that, uh, probability of computing snowfall. If you talk about snowfall, those happens in uh, continuum fashion. It is not, not like that snowfall falls in a discrete way. It is happening. Ha anyone have enjoyed snow falling? Not. Go and visit Himachal or Uttarakhand, something like that. So the uh, annual and uh, go visit IIT Mandi, uh, main, main campus, not transit campus. In main campus, you will see snow falling. The annual uh, snowfall at a particular ge geographical location is modeled as a normal random variable with mean uh, 60 and a standard deviation 20. Then you have to compute what is the pro uh, probability that this year's snowfall is greater than or equal to 80 inch. You have to compute the probability. So you have to look into normal table only. So in, suppose x is the snow accumulation. Okay. So that means x is having mean uh, normal distribution which is having mean 60 and vari variance. What is the square of 20? 400. 400. Okay. Now, a sunrise x as uh, what I have written here? It would be 60 now. A sunrise this one x. Okay. Uh, Z is the sunrise version of X. So we we are going to compute probability that X is greater than or equal to 80. It is just equivalent to say that X is here. We don't need to go for estimation kind of thing here because X is normally distributed. So it it would be what it is it is equal to uh, one minus probability that X is taking value up to 80. That means what is up to 80 means it is value of CDF at 80. Then here apply normal distribution, uh, deviation, standardization, uh, deviate x by mean of x, that one is 60, and a standard deviation is 20. And if you are applying a standardization with x, then in right hand side of inequality also you have to apply that standardization. So in right hand side you will have 80 minus 60 divided by Without normal table, anyone can say that what would be the possible value of phi of 1? So here it would be 20, sorry, it would be 20 now. Okay, so 1 minus phi of 1. What would be value of phi of 1? It, in the normal table, it is given. It is uh, 0.8413. In the normal table, value of phi of 1 would be 0.8413. Why this value is greater than 0.5? Anyone? Why this value is greater than 0.5? So if you see the PDF of uh, uh, normal, a standard normal random variable, it is coming like this way. I have told that this is the central point. 50% left of this, 50% right of this. Where is 1? It is right of 1. It is 1. So, if you talk about this area, it is containing more than 50%. What is that? It is containing approx 84 84% 84 area. If you, because 1 is right of this one. If someone is saying that, uh, what is the value of uh, uh, CDF at minus 1? You can say that it is containing very small region. So correspondingly, probability would be very small. Okay, so this is the probability you are getting.
okay this is the desired property that uh, you got it from the normal table you don't have to apply uh, distribution you don't have to apply here okay so normal table develop the habit of seeing normal table in the first column you will get the value of z uh, 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 like that it will go on that and if you are willing to see like uh, uh, 0.11 then what you have to do you have to walk uh, horizontally or horizontally against the 0.1 you have to walk so if it is point uh, after 0 1 will come there so in the if you are looking for just 0.10 in the uh, after the first column in the second column you will get the value if you are looking for uh, 0.11 in the second then in the third column you will get the value likewise you have to walk horizontally so it is simply very simple game what you call it so now next uh, uh, question is like that uh, it is uh, signal detection do we have time yes signal detection it is like that uh, binary message is transmitted uh, you know in signal processing how many things you need you need two things one is transmitter another one is receiver and from transmitter to receiver uh, signal is uh, progress uh, communicating signal com communication is happening now no one will want signal to be uh, should be detected what with uh, what they do they corrupt it that we call it they encrypt it transmitter from where you are sending signal you are not sending signal in a pure way you are sending signal in a noisy way that's why randomness is coming that means you are sending a corrupt signal or encrypted signal and decryption will happen there in the receiver side if that person if it is a noisy signal sent and that person doesn't know probability how that person will be able to detect the original signal so that's why probability is coming a lot there in communication as well in communication is not like that only uh, signal will pass noisy signal will be it is not like that noisy coming uh, for just uh, uh, security purpose as well it may come from the path as well while sending environment due to measurement various issues are there so binary message is transmitted as signal that is uh, that message is either minus one or plus one and communication channel uh, corrupt the transmission here see here communication channel that one is corrupting the signal okay corrupt the signal with additive normal noise normal noise okay noise is normal here with mean uh, zero and variance sigma square it is not uh, it is given given to the person who is sitting in the uh, receiver side that person know about sigma you don't know okay so the receiver conclude that the signal would be minus 1 or plus 1 if the value of receiver it is less than 0 then the receiver will say that minus 1 has been sent and if uh, the value of that we call it output y x is the input why the output and noise is coming you can represent it by n that one is uh, Gaussian in nature and if uh, value of y is greater than or equal to 0 then the receiver will conclude that plus 1 has been communicated now you do not have to compute uh, those probabilities you have to compute probability. what is the probability of error when you will compute error that means minus 1 has been sent and y is greater than 0 and 1 has been sent and y is less than 0 that is the error no? so you have to compute the probability of error table what with the help of normal table so minus 1 is trans so what error occurs there are two way of error occurs first one is when minus 1 is transmitted and noise is noise reading is uh, what greater than uh, output is greater than 0 when y output what is y y is x plus n what are the possible value of x minus 1 or 1 if minus 1 has been sent 
then when y will be greater than uh, when y will be greater than 0 when y will be greater than 0 greater than equal to 0 when n is n is greater than equal to 1 y is sum of x and n now are you good and x we are sending it uh, minus 1 or you are saying that uh, there is an error that means y should be greater than equal to 0 when y would be greater than equal to 0 x equal to minus 1 then n should be greater than equal to 1 so the error first error you are committing that n noise should be greater than equal to 1 and second type of error plus 1 has been sent but you are uh, what is meaning of error? If you are getting y greater than 0, then nice, there is no. But when error will occur, when y is less than 0. So, if 1 has been sent, when this would be less than 0, y would be less than, n should be less than equal to minus 1. So, n greater than equal to 1, one error, another error is n less than equal to minus 1. So, compute the probability of these two error. So, in this case, uh, first compute probability that uh, n is greater than equal to 1. So, it is just one minus probability that n is less than 1. Okay. n is normally distributed with uh, variance 1 and mean 0. So, it you will write it here. Variance sigma uh, variance is was sigma square. So, 1 minus you have to asterisk it here. Asterisk it. So, n mean is 0. So, n minus I will say that uh, I will discuss why mean is always 0 for error. If you talk about error, whatever error it would be uh, there, mean of the total error would be always 0. When error is mentioned there, you will talk about so n minus 0 divided by sigma, a standard deviation of the variance, uh, n, a standard deviation, okay, sigma. So, yes, uh, 1 minus 0, uh, so uh, in right hand side also you have to compute the uh, same computation. 1 minus 0 divided by sigma. This quantity will turn into z. So, z is less than equal to 1 by sigma. 1 by z. Okay. Then if you talk about probability, if you talk about probability in term of probability, what would be this one? It is defining the CDF of z. That means value of phi at 1 by sigma and sigma would be generally given to you. The simplest sigma what we can take? Sig sig simplest sigma we can take? 1. Si simplest value of sigma we can take 1. Because uh, yeah, normal random variable may be uh, whatever it is a go having Gaussian uh, distribution, but we can asterisk it. So, that is where si simplest sigma would be 1. So, take sigma equal to 1. So, you will have 1 minus phi of 1. So, phi of 1 we had already seen that. What was the value? 0 0.8417 something like that it was. Okay. 1, 3 is something like that. Okay. So, based on that uh, we can compute the probability of error. What is that? 0 0.1587 when sigma equal to 1. What is this value? Approximately 60 percent chance of error. 16 percent chance, approximately 16 percent chance we can call. So, this is the way to compute error when you are performing signal communication or signal uh, how you are that means 16 percent uh, noise uh, that you will commit mistake and what is the uh, um, that uh, what is the probability of success? 84 percent. So, it is a large probability it is something like that. Okay, There is no any issue that means uh, but you have to uh, improve your system. Okay. Uh, second, second uh, when n is less than minus 1, you, similarly you can compute like this way. S in the second case also you are getting uh, same probability of error, 60, around six, approximately 16 percent. So, this one is, uh, you can say that right tail probability, this one is left tail probability, we can call it. Right tail probability, left tail probability. Okay. 